there are only two things you need to start a bullet journal. That is a notebook and a pen. Maybe some time. And some motivation to get started. There are only two supplies you need to start a bullet journal. And that is a notebook and a pen. While these two here are from the bullet journal company, just because you're bullet journaling doesn't mean you have to use their supplies. Literally any notebook and pen combination will do, but there are some things you might want to consider when picking out these two essential bullet journal tools. Starting with the notebook, one of the biggest things to consider is quality versus resources. We want something that's going to last and stand up to what we have planned for it. If your notebook falls apart, what's the difference between writing in that versus just writing things on scrap pieces of paper? But we also don't want it to break the bank. Some of the other considerations are things like the paper style. Are you looking for a lined notebook, dot grid, full grid, or blank pages? What's the color of the paper? Is it bright white? Is it more cream colored? Or is it something else entirely? What kind of cover type are you looking for? Is it gonna be soft cover or hard cover? And of course, also the size of the notebook. As said, any notebook will work, but you're gonna want it to be one that you actually like using, that's easy to use, it's good quality and will last, and all of that at a price point that you're comfortable with. I find I have a tendency to get better use out of things that I've spent a bit of money on, so I don't mind spending a little bit more for a quality notebook, but your notebook shouldn't break the bank. On that note, I have a bunch of discount codes in the description box below for various notebook companies if you wanted to grab yourself some savings when doing your notebook shopping. We love savings. But our other essential supply is the pen or pens. Here we're really thinking about what you can write with in a way that is efficient, comfortable and legible. You'll also want to consider things like the size and shape of the barrel, because this is important for a comfortable grip, the size and shape of the pen tip, so are you going to be writing more legibly with a smaller or larger nib size? It's good to consider the ink dry time so that you can avoid things like smudging, especially if you're left-handed. The color of the ink can also be important. Are you wanting to use a pen with just the one ink color or do you want a pen where you can replace it or have multiple colors of ink? You'll also want to think about how easy it will be to replace the pen when it runs out. And as part of that, what is the cost of the replacement? One of the best parts about bullet journaling over a longer period of time is looking back and seeing what you wrote in years gone by. It's hard to do that with something that fades. Can you use a pencil? Yes. So long as it checks the efficient, comfortable and legible boxes, then it's all good. The biggest consideration though is do you actually like it? Do you like using that pen? You'll journal more consistently if you like your supplies. Possibly even more important than the notebook and pen is how they work together. If you spend all of this time picking out the perfect notebook and the perfect pen, but then they don't actually work well with each other, that's gonna be a problem. What we're looking for here is how the pen behaves in the notebook or how the notebook holds up with the pen. Are we getting any bleeding or ghosting on the pages? Or rather, does the ink seep through the page onto the other side? that would be bleeding, or can we see a shadow of it? That would be ghosting. Another consideration is, do we have any feathering from the pen? This is when the ink spreads out and away from where you initially put it down on the page, and it's a common consideration with fountain pens in particular. The easiest way to see if your combination works well together though, is to do a pen test page in the back of your journal. This allows you to see how the two supplies interact with each other before you commit to using them for your bullet journal setup. Now, a word of advice, if you're like me, then we like to have all of the tools for any endeavor, before we start on that endeavor. So in this case, having all of our bullet journal tools ready before we go to start a bullet journal. While I completely understand the merit of that, you don't wanna get halfway through and realize you don't have something you need. If you're just starting out, you don't necessarily know what you need at this stage. So don't run out and buy every supply under the sun because there is a good chance you may not use it. Another issue is falling into the research pit. And this is where we use the research stage to procrastinate actually getting started. Let's not have our perfectionism hold us back. Let's just get into it. What's the best notebook or pen really comes down to personal preference a lot of the time. You don't need super specific tools to get started with bullet journaling or to replicate the same results that you see online. You don't need a specific black pen to draw something you've seen someone else do. But I did want to tell you about my preferences so you can see the considerations that I make when selecting my materials. In terms of my notebook, I prefer 160 GSM paper because it's thicker and it means that the pens that I like to use don't bleed or ghost with it. For the paper color, I prefer bright white paper so that my pens, 
especially the water-based coloured pens, show as their true colour rather than a slight variant that you might get on a cream or ivory paper. I prefer dot grid because the dots are non-obtrusive and they give me a bit more flexibility in the layouts that I can easily set up when you compare it to something like a lined notebook or a blank notebook. I often don't use an index in my notebook, so I don't have a great need for page numbers or a pre-printed index section. I know that I like to have an elastic closure and a pen loop, but I'm not too fussed about having bookmarks. Those are my main considerations, which is why I tend towards Archer and Olive notebooks. Those are the ones that I majoritylyly have in my notebook rainbow. And if you wanted to grab yourself an Archer and Olive notebook, you can use code JASHIKURIN10 for 10% off your order. We love savings. When it comes to my pen, there are a few things I'm looking for too. I prefer to write in black ink, and I'm picky about having a writing pen with a good quality of black. I want it to be black black, not grey black. The pen needs to be readily available in my neck of the woods so that I know I can get a replacement easily if and when I run out, and it needs to be relatively inexpensive because I have a tendency to write a lot. I want it to have fairly fast drying time, but it doesn't need to be too fast because I am right-handed, and I need to make sure I have a waterproof pen for decorative work because I don't want it smudging when I use it with my water-based markers. Given those considerations, I actually have two that I commonly use, and I use them for different things. My everyday writing pen is the Papermate Inkjoy gel pen. I love how black it is and it's a good size for my hand and it's easy to come by where I'm based. And the other pen that I commonly use is the Sakura Pigma Micron. This one I'll normally use for line ruling, for calendar layouts, and also for outlining decoration that I mean to color in with my water-based colored markers because the Micron is waterproof while the Inkjoy is not. I do of course have other supplies that I commonly use, but I cover those in another video. For the supplies that I've mentioned in this video though, and some other recommendations, be sure to check out the description box below. The notebook and pen are the two essential bullet journal supplies, but how do you actually pick your bullet journal notebook? It's worth thinking about more deeply, so in this video here we go through some of the other considerations you might want to make when picking your notebook out, or if you're curious about some of the bonus supplies that I recommend for bullet journaling, the video at the bottom is for you. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.